What is up my dudes? Today we're talking about IDEs and we're talking about text editors and the best ones to use for 2018. And I say 2018 because they change every year and they're always adding new features and maybe a different one is better next year. But for this year, that's what we're going to talk about. The first thing we need to talk about is the difference between an IDE and a text editor. Let's start with IDEs first. So an IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment and typically IDEs are used for a project that you're working on. For example, let's talk about Eclipse. Eclipse is used with Java projects. Let's talk about Xcode. Xcode is used for Swift. Let's talk about Visual Studio 2017. That's used for ASP.NET applications. There's also this company called JetBrains. They make a lot of different IDEs. There's almost an IDE for every single language you can think of. They got a Py PyCharm, they got RubyMine, they have WebStorm for JavaScript stuff, they have PHP Storm for PHP stuff. JetBrains makes a lot of great IDEs. The only drawback with JetBrains is that it's, it costs money. It's, you get a free 30-day trial, and if you have a .edu student email, you can get one year free, but it costs. I mean, is it worth the cost? That depends on what you want to do. There's also another IDE called NetBeans. I'm not exactly sure what NetBeans supports, but it's free. And I haven't used it. I've seen other people use it. I didn't you know, dig too far into it because I didn't want to relearn my shortcuts. But the benefit of an IDE is that you can click on a function and it will take you to the definition. So if a function is being used somewhere, you know, control click, it will take you to that definition of where it's defined and what it's doing. If you click on an argument that's being passed in, you can control click on it. I mean, I don't actually know if that's a hotkey, but it will take you back to where that variable is defined. And you can navigate through your project pretty fast that way. GitHub, you can get some testing tools in there. Um, you usually have your own terminal inside of it. You also have error checking in there. Error checking in, uh, inside of IDEs can be extremely helpful versus you know normal error page that you get if your code is not working. Uh, the IDE can generally point you into the right direction better than your error on the page can. So these are just some benefits and, and they're designed you know specifically for whatever you're developing and they can be very very helpful. The only drawback with IDEs besides that the JetBrains one costs money is that they're slow. They can take a while to load up a project or a new file or if you have a really long file it can be it can take a minute to detect where all the functions are, where all the variables are before it outlines it and recognizes your syntax. So that's kind of the drawbacks and the benefits of IDEs. Now if I were to rank them from top to bottom I would say JetBrains, yeah I know they cost and then I would say Visual Studio 2017 because that's what I'm using right now so there's no bias there and then after that I would probably say NetBeans because I haven't worked with Java or Swift before but really though besides, besides just shilling them the JetBrains people know what they're doing and I used PHP Storm at my last job and I used my girlfriend's email <laughs> But, but really though, JetBrains really knows its stuff and they have an IDE for just about anything you can think of and uh, that's why I would put them at number one and you know it's about the same speed as loading up the project is about it's about the same speed when it comes to loading up a project as Visual Studio for me. Visual Studio is pretty good it has TFS support, Team Foundation Server support that's a Microsoft only thing and then um, it has Git support it has its own terminal in there um, as a, you know, it, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty good. But I would say JetBrains Suites, Visual Studio, NetBeans, and the other two because I don't really know. But okay, so that's IDE, let's put IDEs out of the way now. Let's talk about text editors. When, when would you even want to use a text editor if you have an IDE? Well, they're fast, they're quick, and sometimes you don't need all of that other stuff if you just want to download a code file, modify it, and see if it runs or not, or does what you want it to do. But these are some things I look for when I'm looking at text editors. Multiple platform compatibility, speed on opening and recognizing file types, auto-completion of code and syntax detection, third-party plugins, tabbed editing, so you have multiple files at the top, or split pages where you can have an HTML file here and a CSS file here. And I want find and replace text because if you mess up one thing and you realize you have to change it in every location, that can be really annoying to do to go through every single place and manually correct your mistake. And it has to be free. There's a lot of great text editors out there and there's some ones that cost and I would never pay for the ones that cost. But let me give you some examples of the ones that cost. So we have Coda, um, a seven day trial or $99 for the full program. You have Komodo Edit, $300. Um, unreal 
special. We got coffee cup, it's just for HTML and CSS. Um, so let's talk about the free ones first. I'll go from worst to best. So if you want to see the best, just skip to the end and, I, and I'll give you my opinion. You've heard of this one called Brackets. Um, it has no autocomplete and no third party plugins and you can't split the files. There's also another one called Atom. Now I know a lot of people are a fan of Atom, but it's actually pretty slow when you open a large file and too many plugins can cause slowdowns and that can get annoying. Then we have Sublime. Sublime is pretty good. It's super fast. Sublime is really, really fast when it comes to opening almost any file. Um, the, the third party support, I don't know. I've never used it really. I would say after Sublime, I would say Notepad++. Uh, I use that a lot if I just want to open a file and look at the code and close out of it, not if I actually want to do any development. My top most favorite one is Visual Studio Code. Um, Visual Studio Code's layout is very, very easy to understand. It includes some Git integration. You can get Git integration. You can get Git. So it comes with Git integration there, extensions, and it has error handling. And overall, it's, it's pretty fast. It's faster than the Atom. It's like the IDE without all the fluff that you don't need. If you just want to edit some files and see if it runs, I would say Visual Studio Code is the way to go. So hopefully this kind of helps you see the difference between IDEs and text editors and when you would use one over the other. Um, if you have a very large project, use an IDE. If you want to just do some quick editing, open up, you know, you can make simple applications or you can make complex with them, but they're a lot faster. And I I'm a text editor person myself. I do like IDEs and if I had to use one, I'd go with JetBrains probably said that 10 times it seems like I'm sponsored but I'm not so I think that wraps up this video pretty good if you like this video hit that little subscribe button come check out the discord we're always hanging out there got a good group of people contributing link for the discord is in the description below be sure to follow me on Instagram Facebook Twitter all those social media sites I do a stream Monday Wednesday and Friday so if you got any questions write them down be sure to ask me on those days where I'm usually answering questions or we're building something or doing some job prep anyways guys Hopefully this video was helpful. I'll see you in the next one.